Hi, you're listening to Kate Palmer and I'm just going to show you how I've drawn my Wonder Woman journal page using Albrecht Dura Faber-Castell watercolour pencils. In case you didn't know this before, I'm a bit of a Wonder Woman fan and I absolutely love my journal. So I've been planning on doing this for quite a while now, I just haven't gotten around to it. I started by drawing my image in pencil, a little easier to rub out mistakes. A few people have asked what kind of camera I use to record these clips. It's a Logitech Webcam Pro 9000. Unfortunately, they've recently upgraded the software and uh, now the little button that tells you if you're recording or not, strangely, is not quite as easy to see. So I'm really sorry guys, but uh, I thought I was recording when I drew this. Apparently I wasn't. Now, this particular image is inspired by three of my favourite Wonder Woman illustrators, and that's Adam Hughes, Alex Ross, and Michael Turner. These guys are just the cream of the crop when it comes to Wonder Woman illustrators. So, I've kind of taken parts of my favourite images, inspired by each of these three men, and combined them into my own creation. So, I've started with a pencil drawing of my image, and then I'm using my Copic Multiliner, I love these pens, to go and um, I suppose ink the image onto the journal paper. What I'll then do is rub out the pencil marks and start with my watercolouring. Now sometimes I choose to add additional details while I'm inking the image, other times I just stick to something really open and really plain and add the colour with um, the watercolour pencils afterwards. The basic image is now complete, so I'm going to start watercolouring with my Albrecht Dura pencils. I love these, the colours are so vibrant when you add the water to them and they just smoothly spread across the paper. I'm going to work on one colour at a time to try and keep them a bit bright and separate. Now this is not normally how I work with these pencils, but uh, that's the style I'm working on at the moment, everything's a bit stylized and dramatic so it helps if I can keep the colors separate. Now when I was laying down the color I've actually added a little blue to the black just so it creates natural highlights without me having to work too hard. Now I'm just tapping um, the colour off the edge of my water brush and a little paper towel over to the side here to help try and keep those colours clean. Unless you're trying to blend the colours, let each piece that you're working on, so for example the hair, dry before you start on the next piece. So I'll let this dry before I start work on the face. That way it's more difficult, I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's more difficult for the colours to blend when you haven't intended that. Now usually I work on things where I want my colours to blend, but on this piece, I keep everything nice and crisp. You can see I've left the hair quite jagged. This is kind of my, I suppose, mix between comic and anime styles. Everything's really overly exaggerated. And again, sorry, same camera issue guys, so you've missed me colouring in the tiara. For the eye, I'm following quite closely the tutorial from Adam Hughes about leaving light uh, in the eye to make it look, look more realistic. I lay down the colour with the watercolour pencils quite roughly. I don't really pay a lot of attention to detail at this particular point on shading and blending too much. I just put the colours in roughly where I think I want them to be. I also like to leave a little bit of white space on here. That gives me the choice later about making things darker or lighter. Admittedly, you can always go back and add another layer of the watercolour pencils, but I prefer not to. That's just the way I liked it. It's a little hard to see what I'm laying down at this point because I'm working with fairly pale colours, though even the really strong browns that I'm working with, um, depending on the lighting, it's cool for you to see them. But trust me, they are there. I've got some brown blush on the cheek, underneath the eye, the eyebrow, uh, shadows underneath the tiara and along the edges of the nose. Now it's time for a close-up before I start on the watercolouring. The lighting's a little better here so you get a, a better sense of, of what I've actually done. I'm going to start off colouring the lips. Um, you'll be able to see exactly how easy it is and how beautifully these colours blend. 
I'm really applying with it here. It doesn't take any repeated going over. They just work. So that's what I mean before when I said sometimes it really does pay to buy quality. With these, the minute the water hits them, the pigment is spread. Uh, there's no lines unless you've got them on purpose. It just works beautifully. Remember to clean your water brush between each colour. You don't want any colour transfer at this point, especially working on such a pale image. About here you might start to notice what my biggest problem is when watercolouring in a journal that I've already made and bound. Every now and then some starts to buckle. There's not really much you can do about this um, because, as I said, it's bound in a book. Um, usually you may stick it to a surface so that that doesn't happen. I don't really have that option, so all I can do is iron it with a craft iron when I'm finished. I'm starting off on the darkest areas of the face, just so that I can blend those out into some of the white areas that I've left if I want to. You can see how easily the watercolour pencil turns to pure colour. It makes things so simple. Now, one of the best things that Adam Hughes said a tutorial about doing the eyes is that the actual whites of the eyes are very rarely white. So to give the whites a little colour, I'm actually taking a tiny bit of the very palest blue from the iris of the eye and using it to colour in some of the white. That way it has a very, very pale blue shadow. I put a little more effort into colouring my eyes originally with my pencil so I did the rest of the image. Uh, that's meant that I really don't have much to do with my watercolour brush. I think we just touch it to the colour to activate it and make it a bit brighter. You can see I'm a little bit of that blue just to the bottom edge of the eye and just directly under the iris. And that's what I was talking about with um, adding a little colour to the whites. I love the way the gold turned out on the tiara. It really does look metallic and like it's got some sheen. You can see the eyes still wet here and you can see that paper buckling, but I'll fix that later. I've added a tiny little bit of spicker, just a little in the hair, a tiny bit on the lips and around the eye. You can see that it doesn't change the colour at all, it just adds that tiny thread of shimmer. I love it on the eye there, it just makes it look so much more alive. And again, that tiny little bit on the lipstick. I love the way that the eye has turned out and I'd like here to say a big thank you to Adam Hughes who is one of my favourite Wonder Woman illustrators and uh, he has a really fantastic video clip tutorial on how to make eyes look more alive and uh, I've done this following his uh, steps so thank you so much I love it and it really does work I'll put a link on my blog so that everybody else can have a look too. Just as a final touch, I've added a little embellishment to the lower left hand corner that I've coloured with Adirondack alcohol inks. I kept it quite pale so the colours didn't overwhelm the page. And that's my finished page. Thanks for watching.